Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard for nearly $70 billion. Does this mean we're going to see World of Warcraft on the Xbox? Are people going to be rolling around Kalimdor in their Master Chief armor and Warthog mounts? Only time will tell, so while we wait to see what new experiences Microsoft will usher in the World of Warcraft, let's feast on new culinary delights from the land of Azeroth. This is World of Warcraft, New Flavors of Azeroth. This is truly a one-of-a-kind cookbook. Following in the steps of the World of Warcraft game and its many expansions, World of Warcraft New Flavors of Azeroth is kind of an expansion in itself. The original World of Warcraft cookbook came out in 2016 and the author, Chelsea Monroe Castle, has followed it up five years later with this one. If you're interested in the original cookbook, I did make a video on that already, so check that out if you haven't. I would have never thought that I'd see a sequel to a cookbook, but I actually think it's a really cool idea. There's so much content and wow and the world is ever expanding, especially with the expansion, so it's great to see more of that translated to these recipes. The book is written from the perspective of Nomi, one of the Pandaren characters you can encounter in WoW's expansion quests. He puts together this cookbook as a collection of the best recipes he's gathered during his adventures throughout Azeroth, and a lot of them are inspired by the new content introduced in the expansions. What I find really cool about this is that throughout the whole cookbook there are many references that shout out stuff from the first cookbook. There's a small section at the beginning that suggests meals and menu suggestions that pair together dishes from both cookbooks, which is a really neat addition. There are also a few recipes from this cookbook that suggest optional components found from the other cookbooks, so the two books really feel interconnected. Each cookbook is still good on their own separately, but together, they really make each other better and I definitely appreciate them more as a connected set. The recipes in this cookbook are divided into 10 chapters, with each chapter representing a specific region in Azeroth, unlike the first cookbook which categorized recipes by meal type. I think this is an improvement, I really like it when cookbooks have chapters based on locations, because I find it a lot more immersive and it makes me feel like I'm traveling that world. The recipe pages themselves are very similar to the first cookbook. One other point of improvement from this cookbook are the flavor text that describes the dish. I found these descriptions to be way more interesting to read. This time around I found the descriptions to have more personality because they're told from the perspective of an actual in-game character rather than the random nameless narrator of the first book. Also the font is larger and the page background color is lighter so there's more contrast with the text, much easier to read. The food photos are awesome and well plated. I actually think I like the photos in this one more because I find there are more fun and vibrant looking dishes. The photos from the first cookbook felt more grounded in reality and looked more like medieval food, whereas this cookbook had more dishes that were a bit more whimsical and reminiscent of the colorful World of Warcraft. It is a video game after all, so I appreciate the food that looked more imaginative. Now enough with the comparisons, let's get to cooking. I'm gonna make a three course meal from the new flavors of Azeroth to see how this one stacks up in terms of taste. First we travel to Oribus, the eternal city to snack on some meaty apple dumplings. First we gotta put together a medley of transplanar spices. Combine together two tablespoons of brown sugar, one teaspoon of dried savory, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, half a teaspoon of paprika, and one eighth teaspoon of smoked salt. We're only gonna use a portion of this so you can use the leftovers for meat dishes or savory baked goods. Moving on, let's take two large apples and cut them both in half through the middle. Then scoop out the core part and toss it. Also scoop out the apple meat and save that for later. Leave about a quarter inch of the apple flesh from the skin until you get four nice hollowed out apple cups. Roughly chop up the apple meat that you scooped out. In a saucepan, fry up some breakfast sausage meat on medium-high heat for about 10 minutes. When it's brown and crumbly, remove any excess fat, if any, and then add in your chopped apples and cook those until they're soft. Remove that from the heat and add in half a cup of grated cheddar cheese, add a teaspoon of those transplaner spice mix you made, and some salt and pepper to taste. Mix it all up. Fill in your apple cups with a meat and apple mixture and bake those at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 to 25 minutes. Once done, just drizzle over some of your favorite barbecue sauce and you're ready to enjoy your meaty apple dumplings. 
Next, we head to Boralis, the capital city of Kulturas. We're trying one of this maritime island's most delicious seafood dishes, the sailor's pie. This is the cover photo of the book and it looks so cool I had to try to make it. We start with placing three potatoes peeled and cubed in a saucepan along with two to three cloves of peeled garlic. Submerge both in water and boil for about 15 minutes until they get soft. Strain them and set a third of the potatoes aside and mash the rest of the two thirds with the garlic along with two tablespoons of butter and up to one cup of milk. If you don't add the milk a bit at a time and dump everything in, then you might end up with a soupy, gloppy mess. I totally did this on purpose to show you an example and not because I was taking a lazy shortcut. Not at all. Let's do this the right way this time by adding the milk in a bit at a time. We want a consistency that's creamy, but still somewhat shapeable. That's what I'm talking about. Add some salt and pepper to taste. Now in a frying pan, add 12 ounces of white fish fillets. I used haddock, but the book said that any fish would work, so it's up to you. Add two cups of whole milk, three bay leaves, and a pinch of each of black pepper, paprika, and mustard powder. Bring everything up to a simmer and cook for around 15 minutes until the fish is easily flaky. Remove the fish and add it to the one third of potatoes you set aside. Strain the milk from the pan in a container and add more milk to it until you have a total of one and a half cups. You'll need this for the sauce. In a pan, melt two tablespoons of butter and cook two leeks sliced a quarter inch thin and using the white parts only. Cook them over medium heat until they're soft. After that, stir in two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. When combined, keep stirring and gradually add in the one and a half cups of milk you set aside and keep stirring until the mixture gets thick. Remove the mixture from the heat and add in half a cup of cheddar cheese. Add in the fish and potatoes along with one carrot, peeled and diced, and half a cup of peas, and half to one cup of cooked salad shrimp. I ended up using cocktail shrimp from Costco, so I hope it turns out okay. Mix everything well and put the mixture in a pie plate. Smooth it out and then add the mashed potatoes on top and roughly shape it so that it looks like a stormy sea. Bake this at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 to 30 minutes. Now for the thing that scares me the most, the fish tails and tentacles. This is actually an optional component of the recipe to make these. The book actually refers to a flaky pie dough recipe from the other cookbook, but if you don't have the other cookbook, I suggest you do what I did and just use store-bought pie crust instead. The store-bought stuff is surprisingly easy to shape. I used a knife to cut out the main shape and draw the lines. I used a circular piping nozzle for the tentacle suction and the fish scales. I kind of rushed these, so I'm sure you can make them look better. Brush the shapes with an egg wash. I pop them in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes until they're golden brown. Unfortunately for me, some of my tails broke because I pressed too hard with the nozzle, but we still got a good collection of them. I think this turned out pretty awesome looking. Our last stop takes us to the canyons of the Thousand Needles where we'll meet the ice cream vendor Brivelthwerp as we try his specialty, Brivelthwerp's crunchy ice cream bars. Ooh, that's hard to pronounce. In the game, apparently the crunch comes from silithid chitons, but thankfully the cookbook wisely replaced those with peanuts instead. Phew. In a food processor, let's start by combining one and a half cups of honey roasted peanuts with eight soft medjool dates that are pitted, half a cup of granola, and one to two tablespoons of honey, depending on how sweet you want it. I went with two, of course. Pulse it all together until you get a fine consistency. In a parchment paper lined baking dish, spread your mixture to create that base. Now let's get to Brivelthwerp's famous ice cream. In a large bowl or in your mixer, beat two cups of heavy cream until it gets thick enough to form stiff peaks. At first attempt, I definitely think I overmixed it and I think it got way too thick. I tried it again and mixed it in medium speed instead and stopped when I got this consistency. Hopefully that's stiff enough. In another bowl, mix together 12 ounces of sweetened condensed milk, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, a pinch of salt, and whatever extra flavorings you want to throw in. The book suggests the banana flavor, so I added two peeled diced bananas and a pinch of cinnamon. Gently fold this mixture into the cream to keep it airy and then spread it on top of the crunchy base layer. Smooth it out and place it in the freezer for at least four hours, but better overnight. 
When frozen, cut the ice cream into squares. I had to work pretty fast here since it was starting to melt. Melt eight ounces of dark chocolate chips in the micro. Drizzle over the chocolate. My drizzle game is pretty sloppy, so let's just turn this around to cover that up. Sprinkle some of the crushed peanuts and you're set. So here is our World of Warcraft meal. Let's taste these new flavors. Starting with the meaty apple dumplings, even though I think I overcooked this a little, I really like the smell of the apples and sausages. Just tasting the filling, it's not bad. Pork and apples go really well together, so it's pretty tasty. I feel like it's missing something though. Let's try it with the whole apple cup. Yup, that's it. Eating it with the whole apple is the way to go. The warm baked apple makes it so juicy and I really like the added sweetness. I need to start using baked apples to sandwich everything. Apple burgers, apple tacos, apple PB and J. I got some testing to do. For the sailor's pie, I love how this turned out. It looks so cool with the tentacles and tail sticking out of that potato ocean. Love it. Taste wise, it's also pretty solid. The texture of the filling is really nice. It's super creamy, but you can still feel the bites of fish and shrimp. The carrots are a bit Hard for me though, next time I probably would boil the carrots along with the diced potatoes in the first step to soften them up a little bit more. So the texture is good, but the seasoning is a bit lacking and could use a bit of a boost. I ended up sprinkling some Old Bay seasoning in Tabasco and it made it a lot better. Consider adding those if you end up making this dish. For dessert, let's see how good Brivelthorpe's crunchy ice cream bars are. I'm kind of concerned about this because sometimes homemade ice cream can be a bit icy and not that creamy. And since this is my first time trying to make ice cream, it's very possible that I messed it up. Fortunately, this recipe was bang on because this was mighty delicious, y'all. The ice cream itself is pretty creamy and I love the banana chunks in them. The nutty base gives a nice crunchy texture contrast and the sweetness of the dates were the perfect amount of sweetness for my taste buds. Love how the dark chocolate sauce freezes up and creates a delicate shell on top and it's so satisfying to shatter. Good stuff, Brivelthorpe. You've won me over. Final verdict for the World of Warcraft, new flavors of Azeroth, a worthy sequel.